Hello world, welcome, 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 or welcome back. I'm Goddess Dawn. It's Tuesday, May 21st, 2019. And I'm back again with a, another R. Kelly update. Following up the video I posted on Sunday, yet another headline that doesn't look so good for him, despite what his attorneys are claiming. This is coming from multiple news outlets, but what I'm reading is from theblast.com. The headline reads, R. Kelly, multiple federal indictments expected to be filed soon. And this was actually posted on May 19th, which was Sunday. The ongoing federal investigation into R. Kelly is close to wrapping up, and there's a very good chance the singer will be battling dual indictments, both in New York and Illinois. Sources familiar with the investigation tell The Blast Officials have been interviewing witnesses and testimony will be presented in front of the grand juries, plural, juries, in both the Southern District of New York and the Northern District of Illinois. So there's multiple grand juries that they're speaking on. One source directly involved with the investigation tells us they expect everything to be wrapped up within the next few weeks and anticipate two indictments to be filed. We're told the charges will mainly deal with sex trafficking and tax evasion. As we reported, officials have been specifically interested in how Kelly and his associates allegedly bought plane tickets for underage girls and moved them around the country while he was performing. The investigation has been led by officials with ICE Homeland Security Investigations, which is responsible for investigating crimes of human trafficking, sex trafficking, and child exploitation. HSI is the investigative arm of the Department of Homeland Security. Back in March, multiple interviews were conducted in Georgia after investigators traveled from New York to meet with victims and witnesses. One of those interviews included Kelly's ex-stylist and another involved a brand new accuser who claimed she was a victim of sexual abuse while also witnessing sexual abuse of other women. We're told a key group of those witnesses were from the family of girlfriend Joyce Lynn Savage, who met with the team of investigators and provided information and physical evidence, including plane tickets, text messages, and photos. We're told the evidence delivered by the Savage family heavily contributed to the federal case built against Kelly. So there you have it. And there's the source, the Savage family, it's not looking good for um, R. Kelly. If you want to believe that, you know, that I'm I'm wrong, I'm not fact-checking, um, that's fine. Also, it's all good to agree to disagree. I'm just a spectator and I'm just commenting my opinions. It looks like R. Kelly's brought another attorney onto his team. I've seen at least a couple comments stating that, you know, she's a beast and, you know, she's going to come in and save the day for him. Her name is Nicole Blank Becker, and she was the head of the sex crimes unit when she left the Macomb County Prosecutor's Office last year. Becker is one of six attorneys for the singer and the only one currently from Michigan. She said she worked for the Legal Aid Defender Office in Detroit and the Wayne County Prosecutor's Office before joining Macomb County Prosecutor's Office in 2005 and then moving to private practice in 2018. She started representing Kelly in March, is what they're saying. And what I find interesting is um, there's a Q&A with her, and I'm on, um, it's the freep.com, free press, which is what that stands for, Detroit's freepress.com. And they asked her, how did she come to represent R. Kelly? And this is what she said. Judge Vonda Evans, whom I've known since practicing in Detroit, had a connection to the R. Kelly camp. That right there, to me, says a lot. What kind of connection does Judge Vonda Evans have with R. Kelly? And one where she would refer an attorney who is considered a quote-unquote beast and who has prosecuted sex uh, offenders in the past. She went on to say, she immediately thought of me because of my experience with sex crimes. I had a number of meetings with Robert and then I was part of the team. So what he used his, you know, his charms or his whatever you want to call it and lured her into the team. She was once a prosecutor, but now she's defending this guy. 
So there's more here, but I'm not going to go into that. More power to them. He has a lot up against him. Um, there was another headline from allhiphop.com stating that, and this is recent, I think today, or actually this was also Sunday. A lot of reports on him on Sunday, including my own video. Check that out if you haven't already. It's about 30 minutes long, but it's pretty thorough. And it's pretty much focusing on everything that has happened with him in the month of May, which is a lot. So this headline um, that I came across on All Hip Hop stated that there are plans for him to return to the stage with new music. But once reading the article, it really just says that that's what he is hoping to do and there are no bookings. So just an example of how headlines can be misleading. The, the way the headline reads looks as if he actually has bookings and he's about to get it popping again. But according to the actual article, this is another attorney speaking on his behalf, stating that this is a goal of his. So what I feel this is, is just PR and putting out feelers and putting the, the word out or bat, the bat signal, if you will, to let people know that he's looking for work. And he can't leave Illinois, so it has to be within the state of Illinois. And that's what's happening with that. I think that's going to do it for me. Thanks for checking me out. Subscribe if you haven't already. Like this video and go ahead and comment because I'm all about it. All right. Till next time. Peace.